How many different chords did you hear? If you said six, well, you're not even in the game. If you said five or four or three, you weren't listening. How many different chords did you hear? If you said two, okay, now we can proceed forward. And were the chords moving in an upward manner, coming from the original home bass chord, or did it go down? If you said, well, it went up, okay, we're doing pretty well here. How far did it go up? And how would you determine that? And what was the quality of the first chord? These are all questions you have to, if you don't immediately know them just from listening, and you're just getting your ears on, you want to train your ears, these are the questions to help you figure things out. Was this first chord major or minor? Right now I'm listening to what I played. Can you remember what I just played? Can you get that sound? It was, it was a major, wasn't it? And you had to find where that root was, so if you came up with B flat, okay, we're 50% there. Then, if you heard that it went up, you have to determine how far did it go up. And what do we use as our ruler? We're going to use the major scale. So if this is one, because I'm going to assume it's a one chord, it's major, it could be four or five, right? Well, hold on, we're going to talk about that. If I play this chord, and I hear a major, then I hear this. Let's assume you don't see what I'm doing right now. Okay, I hear that it went up, and I also hear, in a snapshot way, oh, now it's a minor chord. This is training your ears, you know, because you've got to discern that this is a major, it's its own entity, and then that's a minor. Okay, so we have a major chord, and then how far up is the minor? Well, I go one, two, okay. So what do we have here? We have a one, two progression in the key of B flat. Now there's more to this, because this could also be in another key. I'm going to talk about that a little later. But I also said that I wanted you to get the rhythm squared away. What was the groove that I was playing? When we talk about the groove, what do we mean? Well, the tempo was one, two, three. I was going. I want you to mute the strings and do what I'm doing with my right hand. One, and two, and three, and four. And. So when you're tapping your foot, you smack three strings, three or four. And then when your foot's up, you just play the sixth string. You're muting the strings, you also have a palm mute. That gives me one and two and three. It's as if I'm playing drums and I'm doing four on the floor with the kick drum going thump, 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 thump. And then I've got the hi going ch -ch 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 -ch. There's an accent on the number and the and's a little lighter. So you want to emulate the drums. Let's get this up to speed. And then I simply went Okay, what am I playing when I go to that C minor? Meaning technically, watch my picking hand. Notice I played an upstroke. That's because I wanted this to sound like an open hi-hat. So when it opens up, I need a different sound. The upstroke's gonna bring out the high voices in that chord. All the rest of the strokes were down strokes. Now, I don't know if I've ever used this story. I tell my students this frequently. I think I've done it in videos, but I'm going to give it to you again. All right, so each of us, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. So let's say your name is Joe or Mary or whatever, and you, you come into $100 million, I come into $100 million. You go out and you buy a beautiful sailboat, and you're down here in Florida, and so, oh, it's a lovely place to sail when the weather's great, right? And it's always nice. And I go out and I get a big old cigarette boat that's loud and flashy and it drinks gas and it's fast. So we're both in the intercoastal waterway where you're limited to a five knot speed. You can't go faster because you've got seawalls and residences. Is there a different vibe on your vessel than on mine? Your sailboat is relaxed and serene, whereas my cigarette boat is like a racehorse wanting to jump out of the gate. I use that analogy because for guitarists, we have the sailboat... <laughs> I'm still playing one and two and three and four and. So those are the two approaches for your picking. Consecutive downstrokes for a driving sound, down upstrokes for a more relaxed feel. And you can intersperse them any way you want, but that's important because we're not just talking about the rhythm, we're talking about the feel, all those nuances of rhythm. Ear training is not just about pitch and chords, it's also about rhythm. And I encourage you, I'm all about rhythm, and that's one of the glaring weaknesses 
I've been teaching almost 50 years, and that's always one of the glaring weaknesses. I've rarely had a student come in who was super sharp on their rhythm. I think one reason is because they don't start with drums. I start with drums. I always think drums. And, you know, they don't realize that this functions as a drum. And I've said that in many of my courses, and I'll continue to say it because that's your foundation. If I wasn't playing in a nice solid groove, it wouldn't be music. All right, so I've given you some ideas of how to play this. And you know, I told you a few minutes ago, I said, well, I'm giving you two pieces of the puzzle, right? You have a major chord and a minor chord a whole step higher. I want you to look at chart number one and go to the key of B flat. And indeed, the B flat is the one chord and the C minor is the two chord. But then I want you to go to the key of E flat. In the key of E flat, isn't B flat the five chord? That's a major chord. And C minor would be the six chord. So do you see that there are two possible keys that you could be in? When you hear a major chord and a minor chord a whole step higher, it could be a one, two, or it could be a five, six. How would you determine that? Well, you get some more pieces of the puzzle with any other chords that are punctuated in, or perhaps a melody line or something else that gives you a clear picture. But there are these ambiguous situations where you could be in either or both keys, and sometimes you don't really pin it down because you leave a certain note out when you're soloing. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, I just want to keep this basic ear training here, but know your options. So how do you know your options? By understanding chart number one.